Well, my name is Hugh Ross. Welcome to a special feature of Star Cells and God News of the Day, where we talk about uh, a late that scientific discovery that has significance uh, for the Christian faith. And it's in this paper. It was literally posted just Friday afternoon, just a few days ago, Friday afternoon. This paper was posted on the website of the Journal of the Geological Society. That's a British uh, Journal of Geology. It'll show up in the September issue. Uh, it's a paper written by eight geologists uh, from Italy, uh, from Norway, and uh, from, uh, Great Britain, from the United Kingdom. And uh, it concerns a snowball event. Now, I grew up in Canada. A snowball event is where we would get together a bunch of our friends. When it was snowing outside, we'd all build snow forts, and we'd get a collection of snowballs and throw snowballs at one another. Not at one another. Our attempt was to destroy the other person's uh, snowball fort. But this is a different kind of snowball event. We're talking about an event where virtually the entire surface of the Earth because, becomes covered with thousands of feet of ice. Uh, this first slide actually shows you uh, what they believe the Sturtian glaciation event looked like, uh, where 85 to 92 percent of the surface of Earth was covered with thick ice. And one of the things that these eight, uh, well, I'll get to this in a minute, uh, the problem with trying to investigate uh, these glaciation events, there's four of them that occurred in Earth's history where more than 80% of the surface of the Earth became covered with ice. So we're not just talking an ice age where, say, 20% becomes covered with ice. We're talking with more than 80% and as much as 95% of the surface of the Earth becomes covered uh, with ice. It's only happened four times in Earth's history. It's never happened in the last half billion years. But these are crucial events uh, for the possibility of advanced life on planet Earth. And uh, we know they have to be well-timed. And so we've known, for example, that with an ice age uh, or a snowball event, uh, that uh, that ice coverage uh, causes the ocean to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And when you get as much more than 60% of the surface of the Earth covered with ice, that actually stimulates the deep oxygen cycle in the crust of the Earth. The net effect is that these snowball events dramatically pull greenhouse gases of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide gets pulled out of the atmosphere and oxygen gets pumped into the atmosphere. And so these four snowball events that happen in Earth's history is responsible for reducing the carbon dioxide level down to where you can have advanced animals living so, for example, we human beings begin to suffer very serious respiratory issues uh, when the carbon dioxide level rises above 900 parts per million. Where is it today? 415 parts. So if it doubles, we're in trouble. Uh, and, but also, you need a minimum amount of carbon dioxide for photosynthetic life to survive. You need a minimum of about 150 to 160 uh, parts per million. So if you want advanced photosynthetic life, you've got to make sure the carbon dioxide level is within that range. If you want advanced animals, it's got to be less than 900. And of course, advanced animals need about 20 to 21% oxygen in the atmosphere. And our planet began with virtually no oxygen. We're talking less than a hundredth of a percent of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere and started off with nearly 100,000 parts of carbon dioxide per million in the atmosphere. So our atmosphere was at more than 10% carbon dioxide. And thanks to these snowball events, it got reduced to the level. But a geophysicists have known for some time that you got to be careful on the timing of these uh, snowball events. If the snowball, because the problem is that during Earth's history, the sun is getting brighter and brighter as it continues to fuse hydrogen into helium. So if you go back at the time of the origin of life on planet Earth, 3.8 billion years ago, uh, the sun was about 23% dimmer than it is today. Uh, so if the ice coverage is too great, or if it happens too soon, the sun will be so dim at that time that that ice will permanently cover the face of the Earth and rule out the possibility of any kind of life from that point onward. So you can't have these ice ball events 
happening too soon, snowball events happening too soon or being too extensive, uh, then you've got a problem. On the other hand, if they occur too late, that means that the sun will be so bright uh, that it'll evaporate all the water off the face of the earth and you won't have a snowball event. Or you wind up pumping too much oxygen in the atmosphere. The oxygen content goes up to, say, 24 to 25 percent. Then you've got grass and forest fires just breaking out all over the earth and uh, making life at least very miserable for advanced life, if not impossible. Uh, so if the snowball events happen too late or they're not extensive enough, we got a problem. It has to be perfectly timed. Now, geophysicists have longed for a tool to actually date uh, when these snowball events occur, what the coverage is, what the effect it has on its life. And uh, for that to be possible, they need to recover zircons within the deposits uh, that record uh, the snowball event. And you say, why zircons? Well, zircons are very stable. They resist abrasion, so they're going to survive the erosion effects of uh, a snowball event. Um, and with a zircon, it's going to have uranium within it. It's going to have the lead decay products from uranium decay, which means you can get a date uh, for when the snowball event occurred. And uh, also, it'll conclude uh, carbon isotopes. And uh, life has the property uh, that it favors carbon-12 to carbon-13. So if you get a zircon where you can recover the uranium, the lead, uh, the carbon isotopes, the nitrogen isotopes, because life always prefers the lighter isotope, you can tell how much life was upon the Earth at that time, what kind of life, and get an idea of the temperature conditions at that time. Here's the problem. Geophysicists, in investigating uh, these snowball events, have only been able to cover every few zircons. And that's because in almost every case, uh, the snowball event is dynamic. You've got these ice ages moving back and forth. Uh, so for example, in the second slide, this actually shows you the southernmost ice field in North America. It's a Conrad ice field in British Columbia in the Purcell Mountains. Uh, only 100 miles north of the 49th parallel of the U.S. border. And here you got 11 massive glaciers all flowing together and uh, feeding uh, the great rivers in uh, British Columbia, the Kootenai River especially. This was happening all over the earth. Uh, so, and what you notice here, these things move. In fact, I've been to the Conrad Glacier, and you actually hear the movement of the ice. It moves several feet uh, per day. Uh, so this is happening all over the Earth, and this causes the zircons to actually be moved out of the location, which means they're not useful uh, for dating the characteristics uh, or for dating the timing and the characteristics of the snowball event. But these eight geophysicists found a remarkable feature on one of the western islands of Scotland, and uh, they found this outcrop uh, had it not been disturbed. It dates to the time of the Sturdian, but it wasn't moved around. And in fact, the lead author, uh, his name is Elias uh, Rugen, he made this comment. He says, by some miracle, the transition of the Sturdian snowball event can be seen in this formation in Scotland. Uh, probably the only formation in the world that actually has uh, sufficient stability, sufficiently undisturbed, by the movement of the great ice sheets that we can actually get some information back. And they didn't find just five. I mean, what they point out in the beginning of the paper is previous studies have most found only five zircons that gave them some insight into one of the four uh, snowball events. Because of the stability of this outcrop on this uh, island off of Scotland, they were able to recover more than 2,000 zircons that span the entire time period of the Sturtian uh, snowball event. And so now they had the possibility of getting a detailed look at the Sturtian. And so they were able to determine when the Sturtian began, uh, when we see the transition, say, from tropical life forms to life forms that can only survive under extreme uh, ice conditions or life doesn't exist at all, uh, to when it goes from, uh, you know, 
no life or just very primitive uh, microbial life that can withstand those frozen conditions to going back to tropical conditions. And so with these 2,000 plus zircons, they were able to determine that. And they published that the uh, Sturtian began 720 million years ago and ended 662.7 million years ago, basically showing it lasted for 57 million years. Their studies of the zircons also showed them that the Sturtian uh, was undergoing significant dynamics. Yes, 85 to say 92% of the surface of the Earth was covered with ice, but the ice was moving. So there was always life on planet Earth. There was always life where life that needed warm conditions could exist. But uh, that zone, typically near the equator, kept moving around throughout those uh, 57 million years. So they're able to determine all that uh, with these zircons, uh, looked at the dates, and recognized, yes, this is a firm that indeed you need exquisite fine-tuning in order to explain how it is uh, that the temperature in the surface of the Earth uh, compensated for the brightening of the sun, the snowball events pull greenhouse gases of the atmosphere as the sun is getting brighter. So here's the sun getting brighter, which would raise the temperature at the surface of the Earth. Uh, but pulling out carbon dioxide from the atmosphere uh, would cool the surface of the Earth. The cooling effect, you also get a cooling effect from all that ice coverage because ice reflects sunlight with about 60% efficiency. So that'd be cooling the Earth. The carbon dioxide that's pulled out would be cooling the Earth. That would compensate for the brightening of the sun. But clearly, uh, the timing and the extent and the duration of these snowball events uh, must be perfectly fine-tuned to ensure that you don't get a runaway glaciation where the whole planet becomes covered with ice permanently or you get a runaway evaporation where because of the brightness of the sun, uh, the sun's heat winds up evaporating all the liquid water uh, and converting all the ice on planet Earth into water vapor. And water vapor is a greenhouse gas that would make the conditions of the Earth unbearably hot and uh, it would make life impossible. So it's a very delicate balance, and it's a combination of these four ice ball events. The Sturdian is one of the most dramatic of these events. And so just to put this in context, you've got the Sturdian happening first, the Menorin, which is much shorter, and briefest of all is the gas gears, and uh, those three events paved the way for the Avalon and Cameron explosions of life, when life on planet Earth transition from being mic microbes only to where we now have uh, what we call megafauna, animals as big as a meter, two meters, several meters across, animals progressively more active, needing progressively more and more oxygen in the atmosphere, which means we need uh, these periods of ice coverage uh, that pull carbon dioxide out and pump oxygen in. That actually happens during the ice age cycle we're in right now. Every time there's an ice age, uh, the oxygen remains fairly stable because you need a whole lot of ice to stimulate the deep oxygen cycle. If you've got 10 to 20% ice, that doesn't do anything. Uh, but when you go from 10% ice coverage like we have today to 20 to 23% ice coverage, that pulls a whole lot of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. During the last ice age, carbon dioxide fell to about 165 parts per million. During a warm interglacial, it jumped up to 275. Thanks to human activity, it's now running at a little more uh, than 400. Uh, but it takes these snowball events uh, to really pull a lot of carbon dioxide out and, more importantly, to pump enough oxygen in the atmosphere that you can actually have big animals. And the last one is where you actually have active animals like birds and mammals. So this is all discussed in some detail in uh, my book, uh, Design to the Core, pages 218 to 220, about how these things need to be perfectly timed. What's exciting about this paper, we now have accurate dates for the start and end, uh, the extent, and the dynamical movement of the Sturtian event uh, that affirms uh, this fine-tuning I wrote about on Design to the Core. And the hope is, as they ended their paper saying, maybe we can find a few other out out 
geological outcrops on the face of the earth where we can actually look at the other three uh, snowball events and just really uh, solidify the case for this exquisite fine-tuning. Again, I like what uh, the lead author said. It's a miracle we found a place where we can actually map this transition, get all the detail out. But the biggest miracle of all is how we have perfect timing of the when these snowball events happen. Uh, we have perfect uh, design to make sure they're extensive enough uh, that uh, it gives us just the right amount removal of carbon dioxide and pumping just the right amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. And we also have to fine tune how dynamic these things are. If they're not dynamic, uh, then you get life wiped out over most of the face of the earth. But the fact that you have 10 to 15 percent of the surface of the earth not covered by ice and how that uh, percentage moves around on the surface of the earth uh, means that indeed uh, you have the best scenario for the preserval of life on planet earth and the recovery from the snowball event. Uh, this will be posted on our YouTube channel, so go to the Reasons to Believe YouTube channel. Uh, please comment on it. I read the comments. Uh, share this with your friends. And if you're not already a subscriber to the Reasons to Believe YouTube channel, you can subscribe for free and be alerted to when we're posting uh, new videos. And we're doing that all the time. Thank you.